So how would we choose to defend ourselves against a hook? If we don't want to duck it, and we want to kind of counter right away, how would we choose to do that? Well, I'm glad you asked, because that's what we're going to work on right now, okay? We're going to do a maneuver called cover counter, all right? And we have two different ones, cover counter one, cover counter two, which are the ones we're going to focus on right now. In this case, let's say Sensei Moore is going to take that right hand of his and bring that haymaker street hook kind of punch coming down right here, looking to hit me right in the head, okay? What I want to do is do something about that, all right? Now, naturally, we can do things like duck and run away, all right? Get out of that situation, but if we want to engage, if we want to, like, respond to this situation offensively instead of just purely defensively, here's how we do it. When he comes in with that punch, I'm going to get in closer to him. I'm going to take my elbow and try to get close to his chest, and I'm going to get this hand up here and defend my head, okay? Now, what that looks like from this perspective here is when he's punching in at me with that round kind of punch, I'm going to create this shield going, all right? Notice how my elbow is covering half of my head, the side that he's trying to hit, right? So right, right there like that, it's tight to my head. It's not like that. Okay, and I'm using my hand to grab the back of my head for support. Okay, I'm not just gonna keep my hand up here floating where it can bounce and hit me or something like that. All right, I'm gonna keep it tight like that and create like a shield right here. All right, as I do that, I'm gonna go closer to him with a lunge. All right, so remember, our lunge is pushing off the back foot, boom, getting in with our front foot, and this one follows, right? That's what we're trying to do. So when that punch comes in, I want my hand to come up and getting in close to him, all right? Now, the cool thing about getting in close to the opponent is that you're also getting a lot safer from the hook. If this hook's coming in, and let's say I don't have any hands, if I stay right here, he's trying to channel all that energy right there, all right? That is not gonna feel very good. But if I can get a little closer to him, okay, right here, boom, I'm getting hit with this part of his arm. It's traveling at a lot less speed, okay? Don't ask, that's the whole math, and I need to have like charts and graphs and an easel and a scientific calculator to kind of explain that. But what you're doing is you're getting close. This is not gonna hurt anywhere near as much, all right? So I'm defending myself by covering. I'm defending myself by moving. I'm evading the punch by moving in. And now it's time to counter, okay? Let's switch sides for a second so you can kind of see what that same cover looks like, but with our counter. All right, so from right here, when I'm ready to go, when that punch comes in, I'm gonna defend it. Bam, like that, all right? And then I've got this hand loaded up. You'll notice that I've got a lot of potential targets here from the top of his head all the way down, okay? So this hand here can counter. It could be to the eyes, it could be to the throat, it could be to the solar plexus, it could be to the stomach, it could be to the groin, it could be wherever I want it to be, okay? But what we're gonna practice for now is we're gonna counter right here in the solar plexus area, okay? It's an easy way to counter. All right, so from right here, when that punch comes in, I'm gonna lunge in, bam! I'm gonna pretend that I'm gonna strike right there. I'm gonna throw that punch in and then chamber it back here just so I'm defended, ready to go, okay? Naturally, we can follow up with more. But for now, that's what we're gonna focus on, that initial motion. Okay, so from right here, we're like, hey, hey, relax, don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me. He comes in, bam! I'm loading up and going, okay? Now, footwork is really, really important on this. Let me explain why. All the energy from his punch is coming here at this angle, right? So if I have my feet the wrong direction, like this, okay, and he tries to hit me from that angle, he's trying to push me back into the side. You'll notice I don't have anything back there to hold me up, okay, I'm just going to fall over. But if my feet are the right way, like this, that foot is what's going to help me stay stable when that punch comes. He's basically pushing into the ground sort of, okay? That's why we want to make sure our feet are this way and not this way. Here we're going to get knocked off balance and our counter's not going to be as effective and we're going to have to do all kinds of stuff to try to get our balance back. But if that punch comes in that way and I've got a nice base back here, boom! All right, I can kind of transfer that energy through my body to the ground and it's going to help me stay stable, okay? If you don't believe me, try it. Do it wrong a couple times. Have your parents or your friends try to like push you over and you'll see that it's amazing. From this direction here, your weak spot is like this. Uh oh back that way, all right? All right, that's what we want to make sure we're doing, having the proper footwork, okay? So one more time, our cover counter here. And this time he comes in, boom, I'm gonna fire, doing it all at one time, okay? Now, cover counter two is the same motion but the opposite side, okay? So let's say, without switching sides, him and I, okay, I'm just gonna do a jump switch here, boom, all right, on the opposite side. When that punch comes in now, I'm gonna load up with this hand, boom. Notice how my foot is in front. Whatever side I'm defending on, that foot in front is the one I want to have, right there, okay? And I can counter, okay? Matrix, do, do, do. 
right there, okay? Now you can see it from this side, okay? So here we go. I'm going to start in a neutral position. Let's say that. He's going to throw that punch. I'm going to step to the left foot, defend, and counter. Let's say I'm in a neutral position. He throws that one. I'm going to defend and counter, okay? That's what I want you guys to practice, okay? Making sure the proper foot is in front. Now you can start from a fighting stance if that makes it easier, okay? Or you can start neutral later and show me you know both sides and which foot to step with, okay? But either way, the concept is the same. You're covering, you're countering, you're lunging, okay? Make sure you have those three elements combined. Watch this video over and over again. Get your form down. It's going to be really helpful for you. Right now we're going to discuss how we can evade strikes from the inside, mostly against like their hooks and things like that. So hooks are these half circular kind of punches, like horizontally speaking, they're not circular like that. That's not what we're trying to do, okay? Circular like this, like half circle. My arm's traveling like a half circle kind of move, all right? And that's what we're looking to avoid getting hit by in this situation, okay? So we're imagining they're trying to hit us in the head. All right? In this case, we're not gonna throw up a block or anything like that, even though we could do covers and counters, all right? But another way we can do it is evade entirely. It's one of the principles of ninjutsu, evasion, right? So what I want you guys to focus on for this initial week is just getting that ducking motion done. Now there's a beginner basic kind of duck and then there's an advanced duck, okay? Don't let that confuse you though. Beginners are gonna be for like the little ninjas, all right? The advanced duck is gonna be for the juniors and the adults, okay? So remember, keep that in mind. The basic duck from right here, for the little ninjas here, if that punch starts to come in head level, we're just gonna bend our knees, bring our hands up, and come back up. That's all we're gonna do. Doesn't matter what hand they're using or you know, what direction it's coming from, we're just gonna duck down, come right back up. Notice my hands are going from here, up here, right? I don't want to have my hands go down when I duck. That's not what I want. Okay, we need to ensure we're being protected, okay? So from right here, hands go up and back up, all right? Not gonna worry about any counters yet, okay? So really basic beginner duck, bend those knees. Don't do this, we're not bending our back. You want to maintain eye contact with the opponent so you know what they're gonna do. Bam, defend, okay? Just like that, all right? Now, if we're going to get a little more advanced with it, we're going to try to do a little bit more nuanced movement, okay? This is for the juniors and the adults. So if that hook is stay coming on this side of my head, what I want you to do is I want you to get your defense up, okay? We're going to turn away from that strike, all right, to kind of build a little bit of time into the equation, away from it, ducking underneath it, and come around and back up. You'll notice that I'm kind of drawing a circle with my head. I always tell the people here in the studio, if I have a, like a marker in my mouth, I want you to imagine drawing a circle like that, okay? That's the general idea. But what I really want you guys to focus on for this particular week is not only making that circular motion, but getting our feet into the equation. And that's going to help me get that circle made. So watch. Let's say I take my hands out of the equation entirely. All right, what I want to do is when this punch starts coming in, all right, I'm just going to move my feet this direction. Notice how my head moves away from that line of fire like that and pivoting. I'm going to duck, I'm going to pivot underneath that strike, and then come back front, okay? And later we're going to put a counter in here, so we're going to pivot again. But in this case for now, just to make sure we get that basic motion happening, we want to pivot away from the strike, duck under it with a pivot, and come back straight, okay? Whatever side they're coming on, this way or this way. If it's this side, I'm going to duck away from it, okay? Go under it, pivot back, all right? and come front, okay? So I want you to remember that whenever we're pivoting like this, usually we're loading our counter strike, ready to go, okay? So this is kind of building some time. This is loading up our counter and ducking underneath the strike, and this is where we're gonna come back and counter later. But for now, let's just go like this. Hands here, up, down, back, all right? So it's basically three pivots. Two really strong ones, one really strong pivot two really strong pivot, and this one I'm not coming all the way over, I'm just coming back to front, so it's kind of like a little half pivot, all right? So you can use those in your count. Count, one, two, and a half, all right? Think of it that way. Or the other direction, one, two, and a half, all right? Sort of like that, okay? But focus on your feet, okay? If your feet are right, 
Your body is going to move naturally correct, okay? I don't want you guys to go like this. That's not what I want you to do, okay? Use your legs and your motion in that equation, okay? And it will help you get good circular motion going. So let's see what it looks like with an opponent here from a side view. Let's say Sensei Moore is going to throw this hook at me like this. Bam, all right? Beginner duck, I'm just going to go down underneath it, come right back up. Okay, real simple. Notice how I'm watching him. I'm not looking at his feet. They are eating knees like that, right? I'm going to go ahead and go straight, duck, back up, ready to fire back, okay? If we're doing the advanced duck, right? Let's say this hand comes in. I'm going to cover and turn away from it, go underneath it, and then reset, okay? This side over here, I'm going to turn away from it, underneath it, and reset, okay? So practice it slow, practice it in the air. Imagine drawing that circle for the advanced, all right? And for those of you who are doing the beginners, the little ninjas here, down and back up, okay? Really good ducks. Both of them are useful, the beginner and the advanced. So I expect the juniors and the adults to do the beginner one and the advanced one, okay? But for the little ninjas, do the circle one as a bonus if you want to, okay? But the one for your cue test is gonna be the beginner duck, okay? All right, good luck with that, guys. We'll be here. Working on our scream of defenses, when we have a stick in our hands and the opponent has either a stick or a bigger, longer baseball bat kind of weapon, whatever it is, right, how do we defend ourselves in that situation? Okay, we call this our three, four, and nine scream of stick defenses because the, what we're going to do motion wise is exactly the same moves as number three, number four, and number nine from our scream of nine strike, if you know what that is. But if you don't, it's okay. We're working on these individually at this point, so here's what it looks like. Okay, if I'm in my fighting stance right here. All right, I'm going to have three different motions that I'm going to be working on. First one we call number three. I'm going to take my back foot, go that direction with it, create a ramp over here, a shield over my head, where my hand is not directly here in line of where they're trying to hit, up higher than that. Okay, I'm looking underneath this roof line right here, and I have this portion based off of my arm. Okay, not my elbow where it can slip and I can get hit in the head but off of basically the back of my tricep, just like that, okay? Now, if I were to do a counter from here, I would take this stick and come around and hit. And I can hit sideways, diagonal. We're not really worried about where you're gonna counter at this point, but the idea is getting that defense up and in play. So I'm gonna lunge away. Let's say the strike is coming here on this side of my head. I'm gonna create that roof right here, all right, as a deflection, all right, and then bring it around my head and counter. Okay, that's what our number three looks like. And you'll see what these look like against an opponent in a second. Number four is when I go the opposite direction. Let's say they're hitting this way, okay? I need to get a shield on this side of my head. From right here, I'm gonna go ahead and lunge, all right, Maybe like a 45 degree angle this direction, and I'm gonna create this shield, okay? From right here. Notice how I'm looking through this four. It's like a number four here with my arm and the stick. So that's kind of why we call it a number four. It's also number four of these three misdirecting drills that we do. But anyhow, from right here, right, this is where we're gonna look through, here. I don't want my elbow out there, because it's gonna get smacked. I don't want to be looking on this side of the stick because I'm going to get hit in the head. This is where we want to be, just like that. And notice my other hand, of course, is up. Okay, so from right here, lunging, taking the stick and directly, bang, going like that, okay? Now there's a little subtlety on this I want you guys to watch. What I'm not trying to do is I'm not trying to like flip this stick around, okay? I'm not trying to really flip my stick around. The idea that I want you to think about is almost doing like an uppercut with this hand. Okay, so this stick doesn't come up and then down like a bigger arc like that. It just kind of turns maybe on this midpoint. Boom, all right? It gets to its defensive position a lot faster, and that's where we want to be, just like that. Especially when we're doing a bunch of strikes, and let's say we're right here, okay, we just did our number three, and then we're gonna try to do a number four defense, right? It's trying to hit us on this side. If I take this stick and I flip it like that, all right, I'm picturing moving that stick a lot, that's not gonna do it, right? I gotta be able to get this stick to a defensive position faster. So instead of flipping it like that, I've gotta turn my wrist and get it up there, like that, okay? It's gonna be a lot faster. Here, I could almost catch that weapon coming in on me. We don't want that. We want it to come up and defend, okay? So, one more time. Three is this way, boom, like that. And we can counter if we want, like that. Four is the opposite direction, boom, defending with the number four looking stick right there. And then number nine. Number nine is we're imagining some sort of like straight poke or attack at our leg or something like that. We're gonna get this front leg out of danger. We're gonna come back down, boom, and defend. 
Notice how my stick here is outside of my leg, all right? If someone's trying to like poke me in the leg or something like that for something, I don't want to just stop here and not defend my leg in its entirety, right? We want to make sure when we're stepping back, that stick does a full arc right there. It's kind of like a windshield wiper motion, just like that, get it to the outside of the leg, okay? Let's see what that looks like with a partner. Okay, since they more is over here, he's going to grab a weapon off the rack. There we go, he likes the sheen eye, all right? So in this case, he's gonna attack me on this side, and I'm gonna do a number three. When they're attacking on my left, okay, that is a number three defense. So when that happens, I'm gonna step this direction, and boom, get that ramp going, okay? From here, I can counter if I want to, okay? But the idea right now, let's focus on getting the defense in place. So three right here, boom, like that, defending. Okay, that's what I wanna do, okay? So make sure when we're lunging, not here, right? You can tell this is kind of self-correcting too because if you're doing it with a partner, you'll know if you're doing it or not. Get that block above your head and make sure your hand is not in the line of fire. Okay, those are two really, really common mistakes, okay? Now number four, if he's coming on this side of my head like this, I'm gonna go this way, boom, and create that defense on that side. Again, I should see the opponent through this window right here. And again, my hand shouldn't be down here where it could potentially get hit. If he's trying to hit me in the head, okay, where my head is right here, he's going for that hit right there. If I keep my hand in that spot, even if I move, I can get my hand smacked, okay? So we wanna make sure we get our hand defended and get it out of the line of fire, just like that, okay? Now number nine, okay, if he's gonna go for like a straight poke, he can be anywhere, here, anywhere down my center line or at my legs, I'm gonna step back and defend to the outside, okay? Just like that. All right, now where this stick ends up is depending on where you're defending, right? If he's kind of going high, I may have to go like that and defend it kind of weird, all right? But what do you want, okay? But if it's down to my center line, boom, it may be there. If it's down on my leg, something like that, boom, it may be down low, okay? Whatever I do, I'm trying to make sure I make contact and defend. That's the whole purpose of the maneuver, right? Where I'm landing is what's called the back stance. 60% of my body weight's on my back leg, 40% is on the front. If you don't know, you know percentages, don't worry about it. Google it, you'll figure it out. All right, from right here, I want most of my weight back here, okay? Notice how this foot's kind of pointed back that direction. This one is still pointed forward at the opponent, okay? So I'm gonna go back like that, okay? Now, if I'm in this position and I wanna do a counter, it's a big move. I gotta push my weight back that direction and hit. Okay, I'm kind of going like this though, here, I don't come around this way and smack it, okay? From here, I'm gonna do like a back fist kind of motion and smack that stick that direction, okay? Going like that, all right? So those are the three moves we wanna work on, the three, the four, and the nine, okay? Little subtleties, right? Good defense, making sure everything's right. Elbow pointed at the opponent here. This is above my head, hands in the right spot, and I step the right direction, okay? I don't wanna go like this and step like that, okay? And there's a good reason for that too, okay? If I want to do a counter from here, all right, and it's, the stick is up here on my head, if I try to come and hit where the bad guy was, my feet are all crossed up, okay? I can't get a good counter in there, right? My body's turning on itself. So what I have to do is keep my weapons engaged in the game here. Okay, now my hands are here, I can turn really easily and get other parts of my body back into the equation, all right? So, three is this way, to your right, okay, like that, and our counter looks like that if you want to try the counter. Four is to our left, boom, defending, and make sure you have this looking through the window, right? Make sure you have this on your shoulder, not floating. Give you this way you can get disarmed, like that, that hits you, okay? Keep it secure and tight, okay? Just like that, okay? Counter is like that, okay? Pivoting my feet, okay? And then number nine is if I'm up here and I need to get away from the opponent, I'm moving everything back out of range and defending what could potentially be in range, all right? Just like that. And then my counter is gonna be Striking like that, okay? Notice how I'm now in the right lead in this case and I can switch back if I need to, okay? So those are our three, four, and nine. A lot of details, do it every day like six or seven times, all right? Just even the form and then work with a partner on it. Right now we're gonna tackle our warrior takedown, which is one of our awesome takedowns that we do off of a hook. Right, what I want to do this particular week is I want you guys to do some practice in the air. So we can give our training partners a bit of a break uh, in this particular case. So not, they're, they're not taken down repeatedly. So I'm going to kind of demonstrate how we're going to do this without a partner here today. I'm going to show you what the moves are going to be on Bob here, our buddy Bob. Okay, notice he doesn't have any arms. He's been disarmed. 
And I'm going to go ahead and then do it in the air. And that's how I want you guys to practice this week. Just going through these steps in the air. Okay? So, warrior takedown starts when our opponent here is going to attack us with a hook. We can make him grow a little taller here. Give him some miracle grow. Alright? He's going to bring his arm and imagine trying to come around and hitting me on the side of my head. Okay? I'm going to start with our cover counter one, where we're in our fighting stance like this. We get in close and we strike like that with a nice cover. All right? Now that arm's going to be right here against my arm, now that I've made my shield right here. So I'm going to do the second step. So after strike number one and our cover counter one, I'm going to reach over their arm, get in closer, and do a rising elbow right there at his chin. Okay? Now this is going to make him kind of go up and back. All right? And when that happens, after that elbow, I'm going to pivot my feet, and I'm going to bring his hand down as a hammer fist on the side of his head. Notice how I'm keeping his arm trapped here, his invisible arm, right? So I'm keeping it trapped, and as I'm turning, his arm is kind of getting straightened out and hyperextended a little bit, okay? So I'm going to go in here, one, two, three, and notice how I'm pivoting my feet on three, getting that arm, you can imagine that arm is here, and next week you will see an arm in there, but you will go in there like this and get that arm to hyperextend, make it not feel really good. And after I get that hammer fist here, I'm going to come back in, and I'm going to do either a C-clamp strike or a bridge hand strike. Either one is okay. And then I'm going to do power stance takedown. My back leg is going to come up, and I'm going to chop through his leg, okay, and take him to the floor, okay? So one more time. All the steps are going to be one, two, three, with a big pivot there, holding that arm. You can trap the tricep right here. Keep it tight. You'll see when there's an arm there, but get your arm in this position, basically. Four, bridge hand or C clamp, and then five is going to be our power stance. Of course, Bob doesn't have any legs. Okay, so now how can we do that without any assistance? Nobody, nobody helping us out. No Bob, no nothing. All right, so in the front it looks like this. For my fighting stance, I'm going to go in and go one, two, three, four, 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 and then I'm going to go five. That's our power stance takedown. From here, we're going to follow up to knee on rib, okay, like that, or knee on belly, and we can attack from there, okay? But that takedown portion is the key. Remember, you want to get in close, boom, trap that arm, that hooking arm right there. We're going to hold on to it. So it's our property. Once they hit, try to hit us with it, it becomes ours, right? We're going to go in, bang, and takedown, okay? So by the numbers that you can practice in the air, is going to be one, two, three, notice my feet, four, and five, okay, just like that, all right, those five steps, okay, do it slow, make sure you're watching your feet, all right, and make sure you get a lot of repetition in there, guys, then try to get eyes closed, one, two, three, four, maybe, and five, just like that, notice how I'm ending in a power stance takedown position like that, okay, all right, now when we do this with a partner next week, you kind of see how it all fits together, but memorize those basic steps. Notice how my feet are moving. Okay, I'm going in once, in twice, pivoting, in again. Okay, so I'm moving my feet. Three lunges, one pivot, okay? And then a power stance takedown, okay? So if I had to do this without my arms, okay, it would be like this. It would be one, two, three, four, and five. Power stance takedown. Okay? Alright, so if you're having trouble with that, review this video again and again and again. Practice those steps, get it really good and crisp in the air, and we'll put it in with a partner next week. Good luck with that.